talk about Robbie Liu. And she's an American poker player who's in the headlines after a controversial game against a guy named Garrett Adelson. And it was in a Hustler Casino live game that was streamed over the internet. And she's been accused of cheating by uh, Adelson. Greg, tell us about the videos we're going to watch. Yeah, so just a handful of videos. We're going to start off with two videos that are her talking to her coach the day before this actual thing occurred. So we get a good baseline. Then we're going to go into the actual game. And then the last videos we'll cover are around an interview she did after it. As you said, she was accused of cheating in a more than $250,000 pot. They claim that she had some vibrating device on her. And you'll see that the internet has claimed, hey, there's this ring that they think was part of it. Robbie Jade Lou, what's up? The, hey, how are you doing? The cash, the hustler cash game queen. <laughs> I know, it's kind of wild because we've been on the tournament like cycle for so long. And it's, like, <laughs> weird. it's weird. And you just jump right into the right into the big leagues playing with the biggest cash game names in the world. Yeah, it's insane. And it's so weird because when I like look when I when people are like, what was it like? And you're on that stream, it feels like it feels like you've been practicing for like this big final exam. <laughs> sitting there and all of your answers are gonna be calculated. And even if you get there like at the river, it still kind of matters to the world how it happened. So yeah, you won the pop, but you really shouldn't have the way you played it. So it's like getting fifty percent on an answer as opposed to hundred percent because you have to show how you got to the answer. You know what I mean? so, because in your mind you're like, oh, I just want to be like, oh, but I just kind of sucked him up, you know. So, anyways, yeah. it's really it's funny. It's like all this practice, and there you are, and and you're evaluated, and it's like showtime. That's yeah. what it feels like. Um, yeah. But uh, and then you get to see your mistake. All right, Greg, what do you got? So we see a good baseline. She's talking to someone she knows. This is her coach. She's comfortable. And she rambles a bit, but with intent to add content. She's not just rambling to ramble. She's adding things and she's editing as she speaks. So long sentences with rambling or in her baseline. She uses her hands to illustrate her thought process. By illustrators, we mean she's punctuating her words and thoughts as she's moving. There's one thing that's interesting for me in there, and there's, there's discomfort when she says, and then there's the test. Are you ready? and her shoulder comes up, we associate that single so shoulder shrug with uncertainty or discomfort with a topic. So maybe here the day before she's not certain she's ready. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, uh, I've got one uh, unusual thing here when she says practicing for an exam. Uh, I think the word is studying and practicing might suggest something else. Interesting use of words. And she says, that's what it feels like. There's the single shoulder shrug, right? When, and that's what it feels like. Single shoulder shrug. The only one we see in this clip at all, I think, and it suggests that she lacks confidence in her statement. But if she's describing how it feels to play the game, this becomes a very strange signal to receive here. But overall, as if, if this is a baseline, Words are smooth and flowing. Her cadence is predictable. And her accessing, which is where we look to access information, Greg talks about this a lot. Anytime you're trying to access or find a piece of information in your head, your eyes are going to move somewhere, and typically on her right side. So she looks to her right to access most information. And she typically uses both hands to gesture. So whether that's baseline or not, we'll see in the next few videos. And I think you'll maybe be surprised. Scott, what do you got? All right. She's very relaxed at this point. I think there's that little bit of stress when you first get on an interview when you're on, we've all done that, where you get on your first kind of, it's kind of odd, you're feeling your way through it. Although she's been in this guy's course or whatever, apparently in his poker course, uh, there's that excited kind of adrenaline thing when it first starts because you want to act like you're the, hey, here it's, this is the place to be. So we're seeing that. But after that, she's, she's really... Um, She's really smooth with her, her illustrators. She's loping right along as, as she's talking. We, and loping is when you you talk in a flow and things just go right along, almost like a you know, a horse through a field, somebody riding and loping through a field. Everything looks smooth. I, and I, I agree with you, that little shoulder shrug, that lets us know she's not confident about that because she's only been at playing as a pro for like a year or something, I think I read. I haven't read a whole lot about this at all, but that's my understanding of it. And I think that's what that single shoulder shrug is about. Everything looks as it should uh, to me at this point. Obviously, it, it it would because there's really nothing in play here as far as as finding out she's being deceptive about how she feels about something. 
So I think it's uh, everything is as it should be at this point. Thanks to good baseline. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, nothing, nothing much new there. Um, all the same stuff. Yep, yeah, that big shoulder shrug. Uh, that's what it feels like. This uh, on uh, that idea of it being a school exam. They're they're kind of very young ideas, and I think she's hinting at this thing of I'm pretty new to this, and I feel a bit nervous about it. You know, the only thing I will add is is she's got some good gestures, big gestures, but the elbows are tucked right in, and this for me just exacerbates this idea of she's showing up you know on this show i guess with quite a lot of confidence but i think underlying that is a little bit of a sense of being a novice being being uh, at an important examination coming up and does she really know exactly what she's doing she's not showing up to work, having had years of doing this work. She's a student. She's doing a big exam that's coming up and it's, it's, it's nerves of that. Oh, one last thing, the up talk, you know, upward inflection in there. That's cultural. I don't think we need to pay much attention to that, that I would be expecting that of somebody American or in American, uh, especially female of her age, we're going to get a lot of up talk. No problem with that. But I did like that when you when you told me that there is a because I used to thought it was I think it was really a, a really not a, the best positive outlook for anybody to be like seen inside out as on screen. Like, yeah, like, or your your game yeah. is exposed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's the only way that you even be, you're able to evaluate yourself to see where you're exactly. Are. Yeah. Well, what your tells are? I didn't think I had tells. Yeah. You know, I thought I. Had Poker face, and apparently I don't. So. Yeah, and it's like I, I've been working with you, coaching you, and you know, I, I tell you these things. I try to have you repeat them so I can tell if you have the takeaways or not. And then you're kind of outplaying, and I don't have a lot of visibility on like if you're implementing them well or not. And then with the live stream, we just get that instant feedback. So that's that's really cool. Um, I, I also think like playing online where you have hand histories and then you could share hand histories with other students or with me or whatever. That's another way to get the visibility, but the, the live stream's on another level, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, you always tell me to write down my hands and go over them. And sometimes I'm like, I hope I got what that person bet right when I'm writing them down. Um, and sometimes when I, when I like don't remember it, I'm like, well, it's all here. And I thought that a certain hand played out a certain way and I go back and watch and be like, oh, you know, like, oh, she folded aces. I'm like, no, I did it. Like, if you don't know who we are, we're the Behavior Panel. And I'm Scott Rouse, I'm a body language expert and analyst, and I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation and body language. And I created the number one online body language course, Body Language Tactics, with Greg Hartley. Mark? I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language. Help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, gain credibility every time they communicate, including some of the leaders of the G7. Chase. Hey, I'm Chase Hughes, did 20 years in the U.S. military, wrote the number one best-selling book in behavior profiling, influence, and persuasion, and I teach people that today. Greg? Greg Hartley, I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor. I've written 10 books on body language and behavior and put together this number one bodylanguagetactics.com course with Scott. I spend most of my time on business. All right, Chase, what do you got? So just to pay attention on this one to how she moved her head and where her gaze went when she's saying, you get to see your mistakes. I don't know yet, but uh, something tells me this might come up in a couple of videos. And when she's saying, I didn't know, I, I thought I had a good poker face. Everyone exposes stuff during poker. And no matter how good you are at recognizing and maintaining your own body language, you are a human being as far as I know, that you're a human being. And there's nothing much here relating to the cheating scandal at all. So I will, for now, I'm going to treat this video as a baseline establishment tool. And a baseline is just a person's normal behavior under non-stressful situations, potentially or ostensibly telling the truth. And these behaviors will be compared by me to the ones coming up in the next few videos. And that's what you're going to see. Mark, what do you got?
Yeah, uh, same. So here's what I see in the baseline is she kind of rolls on and rolls on. There's a great speed to everything. She's filling space and she has to grab these breaths in order to create more content and fill the space and fill the space because I think she understands that she's on some kind of YouTube show or, or some kind of uh, uh, um, seminar that she is there as somebody of status because she's been winning some games and she needs to fill the space for her, her mentor there uh, and to make a good show. And so you get all of this stuff going on. That's really all I see in that. That, and it doesn't feel to me from what she's saying that she has a great memory for some of the detail of her games. And that seems a bit of a, if we take that as a baseline, she doesn't have a lot of memory for great detail of what happens in her games and maybe makes mistakes. I thought I, had, I, I did this, it actually turns out I did something else. Uh, Greg, what do you got on this one? Yeah, so in this baseline, what we see, and guys, when we say baseline, there's no such thing as flat lining for people. And by that, I mean, anytime you're interacting with another person, there's no normal. So whatever is causing something to go on in your head is going to give you kind of what's normal. If a person's trying to hide something, later we look for that, or deviation, we look at that. The baseline here is she interrupts her own flow of speech by adding context and texture to make things more fluid, to be more clear about what she means. That will matter later as we start looking at what she has to say. She moves around a fair amount when she's illustrating what she's thinking. And a poker face is a relative thing. That's no poker face to me. But then again, I'm pretty stoic in my face and I got an interrogator face. So Poker face can be different things to different people. Uh, she nods to get approval. There's an interesting one where she does a lip compression when he says, I'm not there and I can't see you. I've taught you, but I'm not there and I can't see you. She does lip compression, which is kind of interesting. And then she drops down into her right, which we typically associate with emotional eye accessing when asked how many of the group coaching sessions have you been to? So we're getting a good feel for how she interacts with people when she's not putting on a face. We'll see something different a little bit later. Scott, what do you got? Yeah, and I agree with you guys about uh, the poker face. Joe Navarro, Navarro always says, you can have a poker face, but you can't have a poker body. And that's true, especially in this situation. And Mark, you nailed it when you said that that she's her memory for her plays and those types of things. That comes into play, as we know, uh, later on. That's really important. And I think realizing that she's she's not a beginner because she's in this this course with this guy and all that she's obviously a very good player she hadn't been in, in the game that long so i think we're seeing somebody coming out like we were talking about earlier before we started when when fighting somebody who has never fought much greg that's the one you really want to watch out for because they're going to do stuff you're not ready for things you're not you're not prepared for and that's what i think we see as well but long in here she's still just loping right along. She's talking, seems very free with what she's, she's with her illustrators. Everything seems to be as it should be in this situation. So I don't see anything uh, odd or anything out of place. And I think it's a good baseline for her uh, conversation with somebody she knows anyway. So I think it was pretty good. So that's a table. poker name? Oh. Check. No, but his first name's <laughs> To take the attention off Garrett, we should go around the table and everybody tell Phil their his, their, their favorite Phil Ivy moment. Please don't. <laughs> Let's go around the table. <laughs> I'll start with me. I'll start with me. Mine, so I'm out. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll start. I'll do me. I'll do TV stories. Yeah, I'm done. Um, so my favorite moment was, I think, when Jason Mercier first came on the scene and then you guys played on High Stakes Poker. He came in like wearing like all this like like really weird, like he had like sunglasses on and like I think that was like the first time you were playing with him. Chase, what do you got? This is a great clip here. This woman is living outside of her skin in a character. There's a strong reactivity to attention and just this hyper awareness of status and hierarchy. It's exactly what we're seeing right here in this video. When she tosses her cards, this behavior is classic false or fake disinterest with some kind of a need to appear superior and relaxed, except you're not those things, you're kind of acting that out. And you see this pacifying thumb rubbing on the hand right there for reassurance and the immediate lip pursing afterwards. And this is a social behavior 
learn through social media. And what I mean by this is that it's a it's not a mammalian behavior like we've evolved into this. It's a false display that has gained popularity very similar to the vocal fry. It's fake. Uh, when people try to sound smart or maybe superiorly, if that's a word, disengaged. And I think we get a chance in this video to see her living in front of her eyes instead of behind them. I think on this podcast that we just looked at, she was behind her eyes. She was in her own head and, and participating willingly. And I've seen thousands of people in my life receive information on concealed earphones or bone conduction speakers this is interestingly similar, and I'm not saying that there's anything going on just yet. I'm not sure if the claim is directly about that or not, but I have seen a lot of that. I know Greg has too, so I'll call on him next. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I think what we're seeing here, this is a complex bunch of body language, but a great first one right out of the gate because she purses her lips as she falls. Now, that could be disapproval at the cards or it could be disapproval at the banter going on because at the center of attention here is that guy, the guy who this becomes all about over time. So she's pursed her lips about something, and we know that has to do with disapproval. Well, she just threw in her cards, so they suck. But there's also a rapid movement you're doing that that thing where you're trying to act like you're something other than you are. But there's also rigid posture, which makes me think there's irritation. And if you're that irritated over two cards, that's probably unusual if you play cards all the time. So it may be bigger. There may be something else going on. We can't tell what causes aggravation. We can see the symptoms. And I see symptoms. Slamming your cards down could be baseline. Some people do that. Some people, and in my exposure, like my wife, is, she would throw things down. I'm like, you're so small to make so much noise. So it's funny to me. Some people do that. It's their behavior to slam things down rather than simply place them. So we can't read into it. We can just say, hmm, rigid, disapproval, aggravation. Where is it coming from? Mark, what do you got? So I see nonverbal communication of insecurity. Un but it doesn't complete. And she goes in to do something else. It's no surprise that then there is... Oh, my internet connection is unstable, it says. So I'm going to start start Jeez. freezing, freezing <laughs> Put on Put your here. hands down. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> You'll be uh, like Yeah, so, uh, so she also uh, has that sour taste before she folds. So it, it's not surprising that she folds because I think that was indicated by that incomplete gesture that happened there. Um, also, her movements are not fluid. They're staccato. And so all of this leads me to think in this particular situation, uh, she is unconfident about the hand that she has or what she is doing generally there. Interesting to see a, a very big change in what she is wearing. So uh, there is very much a sense of potentially putting on a costume, her showing up as the high status Vegas poker player that we would expect. Uh, the shot goes from her to somebody wearing a big white Stetson hat. I mean, it's all it's all you need. And there's maybe some more confident, uh, mature players there that are dressed in black and not trying to be that more gregarious, bigger uh, um, character uh, on, the, on the frame there. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? All right. Obviously, we see stress because it's in the middle of the game. There's a lot going on there. Uh, her posture is, ri is fairly rigid, and she's got that head cocked to the side. And I think when she throws her cards, I think that's frustration. I think we're seeing her frustrated with um, that guy. I think he's getting on her nerves, and I think that's frustration. I think the the purse lips there are part of that as well. That's part of the, her, of her frustration. She What just happened, she doesn't agree with that. Usually suggests we... Or indicates we don't agree with what just happened, what we just heard, or what's been presented at that point. So I think we're seeing frustration, and I don't think I think she's just uncomfortable. In a nutshell, that's what we're seeing at that point. So that's a table. poker name. Oh. No, but his first name's around. <laughs> hmm. To take the attention off Gary, we should go around the table and. Everybody tell Phil their, his, their, their favorite Phil Ivy moment. Please don't. <laughs> Let's go around the table. <laughs> I'll start with me. I'll start with me. Mine, so I'm out. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, start, I'll do me. I'll do me. I'll do me. I'm done. Um, so my favorite moment was, I think, when Jason Mercier first came on the scene and then you guys played on high-stakes poker. He came in, like, wearing, like, all this, like, 
like really weird. Like he had like sunglasses on, and like I think that was like the first time you were playing with him. Really mixing it up here, calling Garrett's raise with Jack Four off. It's blind versus blind, and Garrett here has flopped a straight flush draw, 10 10 9 with a couple clubs. He's gonna bet 2,500. Wow, and Robbie's gonna call here with Jack Four with the Jack of Clubs. Turn is a three, puts it back to her hearts down. And this is usually when Garrett will lay the hammer down with combo draws. He's gonna bet 10,000. And I think Robbie should have probably been out of his hand pre flop. She's got a, one club and one heart. And wow, look at this. What is she thinking about here? She gonna raise it. We saw her raise Ace King a little bit ago for a min raise. Here she's gonna min click. Jack four, and you know Garrett is just so experienced. Oh wait, hold on, let me scratch my face. So that's the shit I got. How often would she do this with a 10? Could he possibly bet three bet here? I mean, she just min clicked the turn. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so the rhythm that her hands have when she's uh, maneuvering chips or cards is very different from the rest of the rhythm of her body. I'd say the rest of the rhythm of her body is smooth. The, the handling of other things is staccato. This would suggest that she is unsure about what she has. I only say that simply because I've read a few papers on uh, on poker and the only discernible science around what is a good tell is how somebody pushes in their chips. Is it staccato or is it smooth? I'd say she's she's maneuvering the, the, the items, the objects around her in a more staccato way rather than a smooth way. So I would suggest, you know, part of her is trying to present the idea of confidence, yet underlying that is unconfidence. Um, she, she does this, um, this scratch uh, idea. I, I can't quite tell what she's saying there, but I think she's, she's playing a, around with the idea that that's a tell that she might have. I think uh, the, the guy across from her does a, a lip retraction on that. She mirrors that lip retraction. So I don't think he's buying what she's selling on that scratch. And I think she worries that, or mirrors that, that not buying that he has unconsciously. I think she's unconfident. He's not buying what she's selling around this. It makes her even more unconfident. That's what I take from this. Uh, Chase, what do you got on it? Yeah, I think this is an attempt here to gain social acceptance of the mask that she is wearing here. We saw a completely different person, completely different behavior in the podcast than we see here. Clothing, appearance, behavior, mannerisms, speech, everything is wildly different. And maybe this guy that she is hoping to react to her isn't. Just a tight-lipped reaction there. And you can see the smile kind of fall off her face as she realizes she's not having much of an impact and then she scans the table to see if it worked on anyone else. And that's what I'm seeing so far. We're going to dive into this over the next few videos, and I think it's going to surprise you about what's actually going on here. Scott, what do you got? All right. Um, again, Joe Navarro says you can have a poker face, but you can't have a poker body. And that's what we're seeing here as well, because we're seeing she gets stressed up a little bit in this spot, and so does the uh, so does the guy Garrett. Um when she, when she raises, that's when he becomes uncomfortable and he gets really still. And you can see those eyes darting around as he's thinking about what's happening. So that lets us know that there's that he, he believes something's he's trying to to decide what cards she has left or what or what she should have left or what's left in her, in her hand. Um, his posture locks and uh, he's, he's calculating at that point. Um, then she protects her cards with both hands. So I think this is the first time we see this. It might be the only time we see her do, do the two hand protection. Nobody else is doing it. Everybody else uses one. They just cover it with one hand, but she uses two. 
And I think she knows that this move she just did bothers Garrett. And I think the, the whole thing with the, uh, the hands, you know, with, with scratching her face and all that, I think she knows she's, she's made him mad or that something's not right there. And that, com that lip compression she does, I think that's what, for me, that was the key that said, she said, whoops, I've made this guy, I've, I've made him mad. And I think she feels like he's the alpha in that situation and she, and she's lower than him there at that point because she hasn't been playing forever. You know, even she was talking about that with her, with her card coach a few minutes ago. So I think she's, she's feeling the, the non-alpha position she has while she's trying to be alpha. I think you're right, Chase. She's got this personality she's throwing in there to, sh to, to be her card playing personality. We use personalities when we go in to interrogate somebody. I don't, I don't go in goofing around talking to them. We, we're very different when we go in and do that. People go, oh, you're so nice or you're so this. How can you do that? And you're not like that at all when you, when you do that. It's a completely different person you use. And I hate to say it like that. I hate to say that you use, but it doesn't. It doesn't start like that. It, it, you you start with a completely different person up front. I think that's what she's doing, which makes sense. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, she has a persona for sure. How she dresses, everything she's doing is intentional. You can't miss that. And look, these guys are professionals, and they make a ton of money doing this stuff. They lose a ton of money too, but they make a ton of money. This is the hand that everything is all revolving around and so all the card stuff aside if you don't know a thing about poker doesn't matter what we're really looking at is the human behavior piece of this after that first call meaning when he puts up an amount of money and she puts up and matches him watch her lips she does a quick disapproval thing at pursed her lips makes me wonder did she look at her cards and go oops oops now i've got how much money on the table what do i do do i abandon it or do i go with it this could be the crux of the matter right here there's something going on in our head that shows me that I'll, I'll stop it on that part of it and then say i do think she thinks this is her poker face that kind of smiley thing she's doing and that the only problem with that is it changes to your point where joe says you don't, can't have a poker body you also can't have a poker face unless you've got a lot of practice at it because minor changes if you create a resting face that is rehearsed it can't hold up when things start changing in your head. That's why my very blank face is a good interrogation face. Cause you don't have anything to think about. You're just sitting there listening. Um, her respiration is calm and easy to follow. She doesn't look too jacked up on adrenaline or that he is watching her. And then he goes down, left, down, right, down, left, down, right. He's rifling through his brain. There's probably a combination of thinking about, about the combinations of cards and look, let's face it. Poker is a fair amount of gut to go along with what you should do. And a lot of past experience. When she's talking about her face scratch, it's a that's a real big myth in poker is that people touch their face when they're feeling uncomfortable or telling. I read a whole bunch of stuff recently around that. And I think she's calling out. She does it intentionally. She doesn't do it and then say, I'm scratching my face. She goes, I'm scratching my face because I got such a hand. That is an interesting piece of what she's doing, playing some kind of psychology to try to get what she wants, I think. She's not stupid. She's playing the game. But then she does something and if you're watching this, this is a tell. You need to pay attention to it. She holds her jaw open as she fishes for what he believed. We're going to see it more than one time in her videos. And I think it's telling us that she's trying to play a fake. Now, whether at this point she knows she only has a jack, which is not a very good hand, or whether she still thinks she has a jack three is the question we'll hear later. I think what we're seeing is she's discovered she's got a problem. And that setting her jaw is trying to see if he's falling for it. That's all I got. Really mixing it up here, calling Garrett's raise with Jack four off. It's blind versus blind, and Garrett here has flopped a straight flush draw, 10 10 9 with a couple clubs. He's gonna bet 2,500. Wow, and Robbie's gonna call here with Jack four with the Jack of clubs. Turn is a three, puts it back to her hearts down. And this is usually when Garrett will lay the hammer down with combo draws. He's going to bet 10,000. And I think Robbie should have probably been out of his hand pre-flop. She's got a, one club and one heart. And wow, look at this. What is she thinking about here? Is she going to raise it? We saw her raise Ace King a little bit ago for a min raise. Here she's going to min click Jack four. And you know Garrett is just so experienced. 
Oh, wait, hold on. Let me scratch my face. So that's the I got. How often would she do this with a 10? Could he possibly bet 3-bet here? I mean, she just min-clicked the turn. If he calls, there'd be about two pot size bets left, so I mean, that's what's got to be going through his head here. I think he's considering bet three betting, and yep, there's the all in. There's the all in. Garrett, like I said, he's just so experienced in bet patterns, bet sizing. She sort of acted a little bit with Jack Eight of Diamonds from a few rounds ago. Gonna put a time chip out. Uh, All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I'm gonna be really short on this one. She does have a pretty good poker face here. She turns her head at one point and then she catches herself and she freezes back up. She's not making a lot of facial expressions. She's not doing a lot, but she barriers and shrinks after the time chip goes. And she puts that down to pause for a minute. She goes to internal and she's actually having some kind of a conversation there, which is why I wonder if she has not played something wrong and realizes it. Look, if I'm cheating and I know that I've got the upper hand, I'm going to be like, yeah, here's my, here's my, my chips. I'm going to be a lot more aggressive than pausing. Now that could be part of an overall plan. Do we think she's that? Or do we think she's just stopped and pausing and thinking, do I go all in? Do I, stop right here and lose my 60,000 or whatever I get on the table. That's what I got. Scott, what do you got? All right. Um, again, she's completely covering her cards. Nobody else is doing like that. I don't know if it, it, it comes from being fairly new. I, don't, I know she's not a newbie, but she hadn't been playing professionally for a long time. I think a year, like I said before. So I don't know if that be, it comes from that or what, or nervousness. Her posture is still pretty stiff and her head's moving slow. She's got it cocked over there uh, to the side. Then she leaves, leans forward and, and brings her chest out. I think she's trying to be, to show she's aggressive, taking a little bit of, of, of turf at this point with everything. Um, and her chin comes up and that exposes her neck. And it's sort of like the opposite of what you think would be going on here with her barriers, barriers and everything. Because I think she's using, she's barriering against this guy as well. I think that's subconscious. So I think it's, I still think she's a little, not as frustrated as she was, but I think she's trying to figure something out in there. Obviously, she's in a situation where she's trying to figure out what, her, what cards everybody has and all that. But I think there's another level of figuring something else out that's that's going on. But the way as calm as she is and everybody else is moving around and moving cards and chips and playing with things, and she's being really, really still. So I think she's, um, I think she's got um, a lot of thinking going on up there. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, you know, I think the double card, uh, the double hands on the card, Scott, is probably because it gives her the benefit of being able to cover fingers at the same time. And that, and that for me would suggest there's something nervous there. I'm not going to suggest she's trying to hide this, this ring that wasn't in the last match, or I don't think it's anything to do with, though it could be. I mean, honestly, yes, it could be, but, but my bias would go towards the benefit is she gets to, to touch her, her, uh, her joints here and also self-soothe a little bit here. So I think it's about about nervousness there that the other players just don't have at this point in their careers or in this particular um, game. I think uh, she is quite good at keeping still on most of that, but even when she's still, go back and you will see the lips move as it, as they're making decisions. So I think there's a lot running in her head at this point, more than should there should be if you knew what the other person had, in, in my book anyway. Um, I think she then settles on her action, and that's when we see her launch forward, but with the hand in the face. Again, that feels quite protected, doesn't seem super confident. And though I think you're absolutely right, Scott, there is an advantage to that gesture that she's now taking up space, she's broadened her shoulders, she's taking up territory. 
it is deflated at the same time and protective at the same time. So I think, you know, for me, it has that double whammy of a gesture of she protects herself, she takes up space. I think I see indecision in, in, in this. Uh, Chase, what do you have on this one? There's one thing that bugged me a lot in this video. There's a strange nod where she's nodding right in the middle of this clip. I'm not sure if anyone was even speaking to her, but you see her nodding in the middle of the clip. I think that's very unusual. And there's some very deliberate leaning going on here. The movements of her eyes, face, and body are very much like watching someone playing a character. And in my estimation, I think someone told her to do this. This is like you asked an average actress to play Jessica Rabbit with little to no training on the role at all. We're, we're seeing a Jessica Rabbit impersonation here. That's all I got. I, I think that the, her head nodding is her jiggling her leg under her table. I do that all the time. And it's, it makes me jiggle like that, like about Parkinson's or something. But no. I think it's from jiggling her leg. It's a, it's an up and down. Was oh, it this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I think she does it again later. If she does it again, let's pay attention. If he calls, it could be about two pot size bets left. So I mean, that's what's got to be going through his head here. I think he's considering bet three betting and yep, there's the all in, there's the all in. Garrett, like I said, he's just so experienced in bet patterns, bet sizing. She sort of acted a little bit with Jack Eight of Diamonds from a few rounds ago. Gonna put a time chip out. She said that she thought Garrett had a draw the a few about 20 minutes ago when Garrett had the full house, the queen four against Jack Eight. And she took some time with it. And then she said, I just want to call to see it. I think he might have me though. Why you shouldn't be hand, in hands like this. She doesn't have a three. So. You want me to call you? I don't know what she is thinking about here because she loses to some bluffs like like King Queen, Queen Jack types of things too. I'm good enough. I call. Oh. She calls? For <laughs> once, but it's up to you. Yikes. Oh my god. Let's see the So far so good. It looks like you're ahead. What is going on here? For once, but it's up to you. <laughs> is it possible that her hand might be misread in the card graphics or something? Because I was shitting on. You do? Yikes. With Jack high? Oh, yeah. But but yeah. I don't I don't have I I I think he has to be. <laughs> All right. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, that's a pretty good one because here we see that jaw thrust thing again that she does way back before and it signals to me what do you think now whether she's doing it intentionally or it is part of when she's trying to bluff certainly it's when she's trying to bluff because she's done bluffs twice she did it at touching my face and then she says threes are no good those are both bluffs and she says something about having a bluff catcher all she means there is i've got either a high card or like a couple of hands or, 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 or a small pair all she's after is trying to get reaction from this guy and you can see that back and forth, that banter and that engaging. You want me to call uh, and let's do it twice. And he goes, no, no, no. And then he gets this nervous, hey, 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 smile. She does go back to a real 
poker face. She really does have a poker face there where she's quiet, not doing a whole lot. Then she shows a very nervous smile. That's not certainty. It's not, Mark, I think what you said just a minute ago, if you're certain the smile is a little more dark, a little more insidious, this is not that. This is not a smile of certainty. She shrinks and she's looking over the table. Now, let's face it, some of that could be her advantage. She could be doing the the fact she's one of the few women in the business and the way she's dressed. All that could play into what her, her entire ploy is. But she shrinks. She looks over the table. She talks about the bluff catcher. Then she puts her hand to her mouth and starts to adapt. This is the first time that we see respiration increase in her. And it's pretty remarkable and you can notice it. And then she goes back to the uncertainty of this whole thing. You just can't miss it. The nervous smile is more the same. I, I don't see a person who's confident that they're winning. Now, if she's got some signaling device, could she be nervous about the signaling device? Sure. Same effect. But I think we're seeing more the other way. And you would be stupid to prolong if there's the opportunity for you to do it quicker and to get moved because the longer you have to hide something like that kind of signaling, the more difficult it becomes. That's what I got. Uh, Chase, what do you got? Greg, please just really quickly give us an example of why these announcers are saying because of Jack high or whatever that means. Can you explain that? Cause I don't, I don't understand it very well. Yeah. So guys in cards, I'm just going to make it very simple. I'm, I'm a, I'm genuine enough about poker to be dangerous. I play, I'm rudimentary, but the, um, the thing is the more cards you have that are alike is the easiest way to think about poker. If I've got one card and it's the highest card possible and everybody else has one card and it's below me, I win. But if they've got two cards, even if it's low numbers and I've got one that's an ace, they still win. So as you move up, the lowest possible winning hand is going to be a high card. Then it goes to a pair, then to two pair, then to three of a kind, and then a full house. And all those numbers are about having more cards that are alike or having a straight where cards are like four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, that kind of thing. So, so chances, that's what they're talking about. The chances Which, of let, her knowing that she's got a really good hand compared to other people are extremely low. Oh, no, there's no way she thinks this is a great hand. There's okay. The only thing she can okay. possibly think, like you said earlier, is she had the jack, and if she thought there was a three, now she's got a pair. And that's still what she's talking about, a bluff catcher. So at the end of the day, she'd have to think he has nothing or she's going to bluff her way through it. Okay. So uh, in this, thank you for that, by the way, for all of us uh, and all the people that are watching like me. In this video, there's a lot more smushing uh, going on with the table here. And I think this is for effect. And it's sadly not getting much of a reaction from the crowd. And if you see Jessica Rabbit, she always gets an effect, but she doesn't search for the effect afterwards. And there's one key moment here that no poker player can ever hide. And when she says, I have a shitty hand, her head drops down and she uses an eyebrow to confirm a yes when she's asked if she actually does have a crappy hand. Then someone begins talking to her. And at this moment, when this person starts talking to her, her head snaps toward that person rapidly. This is high social stress. The rapid motion of the head is opposite of Jessica Rabbit. She's feeling tremendous social pressure for some reason right here. Scott, what do you got? I think she's feeling that pressure because she doesn't understand what's just happened, I think, maybe. She's like, what? Am I right? Am I wrong? I won, right? Is that what's happening? I, I, think, that's what that, I think that's what that's from. Um, and she's still leaning forward, and she's being fairly still. And that rocking, I think you might be right about the other one, Chase, and this is a completely different situation. Her leg is going back and forth, so she's rocking back and forth at this point, not nodding. Uh, and I think she's giving him some, you know, some shit talk and some, or, you know, bluffing talk to help kind of goad him as she goes along trying to get up under his skin at this point. And then she puts her hand in her chin. I think she's adapting at this point because she's nervous and we can see her, her breathing rate uh, goes up a little bit um, and her body language has changed a little bit because her breathing rate is, is shallow even though she's breathing faster still shallow her smile is a little bit too big and she leans in a little bit more like you were saying Chase but it's too far into the table you know it's too it's too much confidence at that point but she maybe she feels confident because maybe she knows she just did win that and uh, when she calls, he, he smiles and gets all giddy because he thinks he's going to win. 
at that point, he's like, oh, well, I got this now, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean house on this. And I think he's under the impression that he just won, and I think she rubs it in. That's what makes it even worse. So um, she's using, her again, her lips and, and, and chin as an adapter because she's nervous. I don't think she really understands what all's what all may be in play at this point outside of what's supposed to be in play. She, I think the social part of it, Chase, is, is starting to come into play now. She feels the heat coming from that guy and other people kind of getting stiffening up and looking around and, and getting quiet in this situation. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so it's interesting, isn't it? That kind of repetitive uh, beat-like nodding that's going on there. Is it that internally in her mind she's singing along to Mr. Blue Sky because uh, she's, you know, she thinks she has a winning hand? It's possible. Or is it self-soothing? Is it that repetitive motion of, I don't know what the hell's going on here, but I know I can move my body back and forwards and be in control of that? Mm, well, what else does it go along with? Well, we've got the head to the side there. That seems seems relaxed that seems calm but then all of this falls uh, like you said Scott into the hand and then everything falls forward onto the table I agree I think there's some properties around that which are to gain attention and also to close space and be a little bit more aggressive okay but all of that all of that gravity is winning on all of this on all of this, she is getting smaller and gravity is winning. And so I would bias on this towards she's not confident right now. Now, could you be in a moment of cheating and not be confident because you worry you're going to get caught? Or or could it be just a great act of unconfidence? Like, yeah, it could, could be all of those things. But based on what we've seen so far, my bias is going towards, no, she's just unconfident that this is, this is the right way to go on this, that she could well lose uh, big with this. She said that she thought Garrett had a draw the, a few, about 20 minutes ago when Garrett had the full house, the queen four against Jack eight. And she took some time with it. And then she said... I just want to call to see it. I think he might have me though. Why you shouldn't be hand, in hands like this? She doesn't have a three, so. You want me to call you? I don't know what she is thinking about here because she loses to some bluffs like like king queen queen jack types of things too. I'm good enough. She calls. Once or twice. <laughs> once, but it's up to you. Yikes. Oh my god. Let's see the So far so good. It looks like you're ahead. What is going on here? For once, but it's up to you. <laughs> is it possible that her hand might be misread in the card graphics or something? Because I was shitting on. You do? Yikes. With Jack high? Oh, yeah. But but yeah, I don't I don't have I I I think he has to be. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to the river. The river is a nine. That one's you for that sure. They're gonna run it Unless twice. You have like five I don't think so. She's you have like a small pair. Yeah, she's a three. You, you give me that much credit? I don't know. Right now. She's good with the first yeah, one. Yeah. You just turn him over. You know, you're not that. Oh. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> if the cards are correct. It's already there. <laughs> what is it called? What is it called? And the river breaks out again. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I need. I want to see. Does she have Jack Four? She got four Jack Hunt. What? Whoa! Look at get. Whoa! Whoa! That's look at Garrett's face. That is. That's a poker right there. That was sick. Wow. That was sick. Oh. 
that is super, super strange. You can see his reaction. Like, what is... What? Jacob, you look like you want to kill me. I'm mean, not Jacob. I'm mean, like, you look like you want to kill me, dude. Oh, he wants to vomit. I was not in the hand. I want to vomit. <laughs> wow. This is... I'm speechless. I mean, I'm speechless. I mean, usually Garrett would be fairly congratulatory if somebody made a hero call like that, but... All right, Chase, what do you got? I have almost no idea what all this talk is uh, about. We had to pause this video while we were just watching it so Greg could, get, could explain this to me. Uh She's explaining herself out of guilt for something she's done but doesn't want to say, or she's still struggling for social acceptance here, which I think we already know is her normal behavior. And she's covertly scanning back and forth across the table for agreement or support from somebody else. And you can see her head even scanning the entire table. And the, the last half of this little clip, she's covering her throat right here. And this is a fear behavior. We're protecting arteries. We're protecting vital organs when we have fear. No idea what the poker stuff means. I'll tell you uh, that I don't know that. I'll let you make the interpretations in the comments and let these guys do the, the uh, poker stuff. Mark, what do you think? Yeah, so there's there's definitely some self-soothing there that goes into the chest area, on the chain there, some mouth masking. I think there's a shoulder smooth there. There's a nose rub. There's a little bit of disgust as well. There's some self-soothing on the hand. I mean, there's a, there's a massive amount of behaviors there that suggest a lot of worry around what is happening right now. Um, she shifts in the chair. She does an exit check as well, I believe. She goes for water, so she goes for resources. Uh, again, a, a lot of stress in this situation here. Um, you know, my understanding is, is that Poker Theory says there are six ways for her to win and 150 ways for her to lose. So anybody who knows statistics wouldn't be still in the game at this point and she is and maybe it's sunk cost i mean that's a piece of behavior there's a piece of a heuristic which is if you put resource in and put resource in and put resource in you are most likely to keep on putting in resource and any poker player sitting there is hoping that all the other players uh, who are new to the game will just sink cost uh, behind hands that have no statistical chance of being a winning hand. Just so happens he does have the winning hand right now because he doesn't have the winning hand. And I think she calls out that uh, this is what you this is what you do. You've done this a number of times online as well. So she seems to call out that this is a behavior that she has tracked from him that often he doesn't have the, the greatest hand. Though there are more ways for him to win than there were for for her. But stress there we can we can see it what is that stress about well we've got some more videos coming up and let's investigate uh scott what do you got on this one i totally agree with you she's com she's completely stressed here she's adapting with her hands and her necklace and everything she's going back and forth you're right chase she's covering her throat that's getting that whole um that's fear at that point and he's but he's at this point still relaxed you know he's still just playing all that that smooth moving around and laughing and being all giddy and stuff and he's he's talking freely he's pretty excited about everything and then after she shows her cards she rubs her nose now a lot of people are going to think that indicates deception and that's someone who's who's being an absolutist we we know that's not true that just because you rub your nose doesn't just because you do anything specific doesn't mean it means that every time you see it when people cross their arms sometimes that means that they're closed off to what you have to say other times it means they're more comfortable it can be cold in there but just because she scratches her nose it doesn't mean that she's being deceptive she does it i think as an adapter because she feels the heat building at this point um, his demeanor changes immediately when she throws those down. And 
he slows down, the smile goes away instantly, and he sort of freezes. And again, he's his eyes are going back and forth, they're running all over the place as he's trying to calculate what's happened, decide what's happened, because I don't think he can believe it at this point. And I don't think she can either, to be honest with you. Um, because she freezes and kind of grimaces. We see that at that point because she's like, oh no, is this right? Is this wrong? Whether she knew what card she had, if it was a three or, or a four, whatever it was, maybe she did mistake that. But I think she's she's thinking, oh no, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what's happened here. I think that's what Jack's stress up as, a lot as well. Then uh, when she says, you, you look like you want to kill me, she adapts with her fingers and her rings again, which is normal for her at this point. That's where all, most of her adapting has been happening, a lot of it with her hands and her rings uh, at this point, like Mark was talking about earlier. And then she makes she moves back from the table, like you were saying, Mark. She takes a big, deep breath, and she's goofing out of that water bottle. And she's uncomfortable with his anger because she can feel it coming across the table. She's been messing with him, and now he's mad. And she's like, oh, no, now he really is mad. And I'm not sure she understands how to, to handle uh, somebody doing that to her, especially a guy in this situation. I think she's the only girl at the table, or woman, excuse me, at the table. So uh, that's got to be uncomfortable, uncomfortable for her in the first place. But to have what I'm mad at you visibly and it's palpable and you know having all this confusion look on his face and all this and that that's making her stress go through the, the roof as well and even the asian player um he's fidgeting around with his chips i think everybody's a little bit nervous because they can feel the, the tension building in there so i think for everybody in there it's a little it's a little bit odd but especially for her and she's showing it greg what do you got yeah, a couple of things. There's an interesting thing where she raises her brow in recognition. Now, we associate when a person goes like this and they recognize something. I want you to tell me what you think that is. It's either when they drop the cards and she's like, wow, I guess I got it. But it's odd. If it, it, Of all the body language I've seen this entire thing, I want to watch that over and over and over and figure out why she's actually doing that rise of, of her brow. It's There's some reason... Tell me what you think. I'm going to spend more time with it and, and keep analyzing and figure it out. But she's adapting like all hell now at the chin. We say adapting. That's the way of releasing nervous energy and making yourself comfortable. We say adapters are more likely to become habits than anything else. And by the way, all you poker players, your habits that are adapters are the most likely to become your tell. It's the way you pacify or comfort yourself. He gets angry. Now, angry can come from more than one reason. It could be he feels cheated or humiliated. He might not even understand why. Look, I'm the big dog in the room and you just came and usurped me like that. You could feel really, really awkward suddenly. Feelings are feelings. I said this to Scott earlier. I've been doing sword stuff for a long time and I did like Taekwondo when I was young. And your best chance of getting hurt when you're fighting is not the experienced fighter because they're not going to take a chance and open their neck for you to hit with a sword. It's the young guy who has no idea what he's doing and just goes, what? comes at you like crazy. Next thing you know, they, Mark, your, your point's a good one. They don't understand the calculated risk. I'm not saying she doesn't understand cards. She clearly understands cards. I think she's more into it, Scott, even than you're giving her credit for here. I think she knows that she's committed too much. And Mark, she may realize, hey, I got all my resource tied up. I'm going to lose everything. What the hell? And if I win, I win. Now, he had a better chance at winning in the beginning, but at the end, doesn't matter. She had the high card. And Chasey does what you're always, you're always describing as trans-derivational search. I, I go, I don't know where to look. Is the same thing. In his head is where he's going. He's not looking at people. He's looking around like, what the hell? How did that just happen is what he's doing. She then goes into lockdown. Like, she's all comfortable, you know, locked down like this. Watch her respiration increase and her blink rate go up. And she starts rubbing her right cheek with her with her thumb to adapt. Why? Well, there's all kinds of reasons that could be. If you've ever been in a meeting at work where two people blow up, you didn't have to be the people that blow up. You start looking for ways to comfort self and look for ways to appear to be normal when you're not. So think of that for a minute. Now, here's what creates all the suspicion about cheating with a vibrating ring in the entire show. See that red ring she's got on? She rotates, she's playing with it, and she turns away and rotates the ring away from her outside of her hand and back into her palm. That is the reason everybody is saying she cheated. They think that somebody was giving her a vibration signal simply to say you have a better hand. That's all you'd have to know. So can we tell that by doing what we're doing? No, we can look and say, why is she doing this? It is interesting that when she turns back, she does a threat check from under the brow to this guy and makes good contact to figure out, am I in danger from this guy? 
Is that normal? Absolutely normal. Not saying she didn't cheat, not saying she did cheat at this point. But that, all of that we expect when there's a heated interchange that way. If he had just sat there and said, damn, you got me, we would have seen something entirely different. <laughs> We'll go to the river. The river is a nine. That one's you for sure. They're gonna run it twice. Like I don't think so. She's you have gonna like small pair. Yeah, she's a three. You, you give me that much credit? I don't know. Right now. She's done? good with the first one. You just turn him over. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> if the cards are correct. He's already there. What's the call? So, so and the oh, river breaks out again. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god. I need to, I want to see. Does she have Jack Four? She got four Jack Hunt? What? Whoa. Look at Jack. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, that's. Look at Garrett's face. That is. Poker right there. That was sick. Wow. That's true. That was sick. <laughs> oh, that is super, super strange. You can see his reaction. Like, what is <laughs> what? <laughs> Ma'am? <laughs> what? <laughs> Very nice to be so <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, you look like you want to kill me. I'm not Jacob. Like, you look like you want to kill me, Jacob. He wants to vomit. <laughs> I was not in the hunt. I want to want it. <laughs> wow. This is. I'm speechless. I mean, I'm speechless. I mean, usually Garrett would be fairly congratulatory if somebody made a hero call like that, but. If somebody made a hero call like that, but. He seems somewhat disturbed here. By wow. what just happened? I don't. Call of the year right there. It's testing. It's literally like the sort of most disturbed look that I've ever seen Garrett give. We can pause it. No, let me tell you what happened. 10,000 min range 20 shove call. And obviously, the reason why he would be that is okay. how, how can she call? I remember. Like maybe he thinks that she she saw his hand somehow or so, I, I don't know. <laughs> nothing, I think nothing happened. The flop goes uh, bet call. The turn goes bet raise shove call. Oh, like what? What do you mean, like like raise? One twenty eight three. Twenty thousand mini raise. No, a big one. A big one. One twenty eight three. I don't, know. I don't understand sort of what's happening right now. E and D. This is a new cut, right? If my jack was in a club, I would have been out. What do you mean if your jack was in a club? You know, you've let me do this to you several times now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's happening. I'm right just now. testing it. Yeah. And this doesn't seem super funny do to me, and honestly. I, no, like, all, when, you bet, when you bet that, like, high risk yeah. stack, why do you don't, go on a twice? I thought you were on ace high. Ace high. Ace high. Uh huh, and then, so why call with Jack Eye then? First of all, a little bit of a straight throw, but I have blockers on there. No, 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 no on the turn, though. So you called all in on the turn because. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't have. That's right. She you thinks you can't be a jack high. It's not about what, what I have. It's, what I'm, it's about what I don't think you have when you play against 50. me. That's it. You didn't think you had jack queen of clubs. 75. Oh. You let me do this talent. to you post stream too. Last time we played. Yeah. Like, you gonna keep letting me. Okay, 50, 75. 100. I mean, obviously, I'll just say it. Gary thinks that this hand was not straight in some way. I mean, there's no doubt about it. This is the most disturbed I've ever seen Garrett look at the table. And and I don't think and I think Andy's disturbed too. He 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 doesn't. If you looked over there, it's like, whoa, what what just happened here? You're not the only one that gets lucky sometimes, Garrett. You don't have to get that upset. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so he's now taking in a lot of data. Watch his eyes move around. And also, he's got an open mouth, I would say, of surprise. Like, it's, he's, he is, let's just say, a little bit dumbstruck by this. He doesn't know what to do at this point. He doesn't know what to say at this point. Just 
getting in data and trying to process it, but no decisions at this point. She still, you know, is still, you know, uh, being suppressed a little by gravity. But now the fingers are right outside. They're spread fingers. So there's way more confidence, I think. Uh, she's displaying status by getting her gold and, uh, you know, reeling it out in front of everybody. It's now, you know, you know, at the same time, I think there's some self-soothing going on there. It plays two roles, self-soothe, protect, but also go, look at, look at the gold, look how rich I am, look how I managed to score on that one. Also big displays of teeth as well to go, look at those, those are super shiny. Displaying of the neck as well and smoothing it to go, look, look at all that neck area there that you can't come in and attack i think i think there's a there's a big display <laughs> there of 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 going look i'm the winner there and you can't come across the table and get me um so i i it just seems like confidence to me uh chase come back with us what do you what do you got uh, well, hello. I, I think this explaining and defending is now getting kind of way overboard for her behavior. And I think there's extreme guilt or extreme embarrassment. It's maybe extreme guilt or embarrassment here. Either way, there is absolutely stress and a feeling of social isolation here. Social isolation injures her the most because that's what she searches the table for is connection and and getting some kind of validation from other people and she's trying to explain and justify to regain group approval here and she's under a lot of what mark might say stress and pressure greg what do you got yeah, I think what we're seeing when you talk about this confidence, I think it's artificial confidence. And what I think it is, is artificial normalcy. After an altercation, people often will get into that point where they need to make things appear to be normal. And one of the things they'll do, she's doing what I call ruffling her plumage. And in people, we all do it. Where I'm wanting to, Let's say I get in an altercation with a guy when I was younger and more physical. Then we'll strut around and be a little bit more physical. We all try to get back to some kind of normal, but it's wooden and rigid and not normal. So this oversized movement that she's doing is a way to comfort. And I think you're dead on with that. But if you look at her, he's she looks at him as a threat clearly, and she's identified it now. And now she's starting to feel like she can say something to him. And she starts to say things to him now. And she'll get more clear as the next videos come. But he's searching for the possibilities in how could that be? You can see him. He's looking around. Your point, Mark. He's looking for intake. He's looking for, and it probably doesn't help that these guys are snickering about him getting paddled by somebody with a jack. So that makes it worse for him, which makes it worse. And if you think about again at work, even if you're not in the altercation, if two people ramp up, you're trying to find normal around and start talking. If you keep doing what these people are doing, the altercation doesn't go away. Scott, what do you got? All right. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, she begins that heavy adapting with the face and, and rubbing her neck and all that. She's really, she's really stressed at this point. <laughs> I'm sorry, fellas. At least total over. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark. That whole state is thick to us, man. Mark, and you're like, yeah, she, yeah, look at this neck here. I've got this uh, neck, neck here. Was good, yeah. Look, it's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> you got some vampire territory here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Can okay, you even hand it back to you, Scott? No. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in too. Okay. So at the top, she's really, she's really adapting a lot because she's obviously stressed as we, as everybody's been going over, rubbing her face and her neck. And uh, she's a lot going on with that necklace as she's fidgeting with that. And she looks away and she doesn't say anything. I, th I think that the stress from this guy being, being angry at this point, I think, and I think he's acting, I'll say it. I think he's acting a little bit immature at this point. It's supposed to be a, a professional game. These people are not that we're being professional on here. We're professionals and we're laughing, but this guy should have been a little bit more professional at this point instead of making such a big deal about it, about all that. I understand maybe he thinks that there's been cheating or something, but man, you don't do it like that. You don't make a, a, a big scene like that. And when he said, when he asked her, uh, what do you mean if a Jack uh, wasn't a club? She redirects and says, you know, you let me do this several times. Now I'm just testing it. That's the first time I went, uh, something may be up here because she's, re you know, redirecting out of that 
that answer into something else, out of that question into something else. And he lets it slide. He lets it go right by. <clears throat> Doesn't go right back to it. He should have, well, of course, most, he's not in touch. Most people do. Yeah. He should have gotten right on there and said, hey, man, you know, I said this or whatever. And then they keep talking, and she t- shoves her tongue in the side of her jaw. That lets me know or it suggests that you feel like you got away with something. And I think that's what she feels like at that point. Now she's starting to feel like she's the dominant person in this situation because I think she feels honest about what happened. I don't think she, she, I, I don't think at this point, I'm not under the impression she cheated or anything, but I think she's feeling confident about this because she, she's <clears throat> showing us the body language that says she did something. She hasn't done anything wrong. She's been doing something that makes her more confident and, and feels better about it. So when she does that like that, that usually indicates someone feels like they got away with something or I've got something on you, or I know something that you don't. Excuse me. <clears throat> and I don't think it's negative. I don't think it's like, oh, I just got away with cheating. I don't think it's that at all. Nothing like that. Um, I think it indicates that she feels good about what's happened up to this point. Uh, and I see we. I think we're seeing all the the right important things here that tell us that that she's under the impression that she won fair and square, even though he doesn't think so. All right, we good. Mm-hmm. If somebody made a hero call <laughs> like that, but he, a to the he seems somewhat disturbed here by wow. what just happened. I don't call it a year right there. It's testing. It's literally like the sort of most disturbed look that I've ever seen Garrett give. <laughs> we can, we can pause it. Let me tell you what happened. Please. 10,000 min range 20 shove call. And obviously the reason why he'd be that is okay. how, how can she call? I remember. Like maybe he thinks that she she saw his hand somehow or so, I, I don't know. <laughs> nothing. I think nothing happened. <laughs> The flop goes uh, bet call. The turn goes bet raise shove three. One, two, call. Three. Oh, like what? What do you mean, like like raise? One twenty-eight three. Twenty thousand bet. Twenty thousand mini raise. Uh, no, no, before the flop. A uh, before, before the flop. Before the flop. One twenty-eight three. I don't, know. I don't understand sort of what's happening Ten. right now. Andy. Right. Yeah. This is a new car, right? If my jack was in a club, I would have been out. What do you mean if your jack was in a club? She had a blocker. Yeah. You know you've let me do this to you several times now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's happening. I'm just that. testing it. Yeah. And this doesn't seem super me funny do this. to me, and honestly. I, no, like bet. when you bet, bet, when you bet that like high big yeah. stack, why did you go on a high? I don't need twice? this. I thought you were on ace high. Ace high. Uh huh. And then so why call with jack eye then? First of all. A little bit of a straight call, but I have blockers on that. No, 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 on like the that. turn though. So you called all in on the turn because. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't have. That's right. She thinks you can't shit. be a jack high. Oh. It's not about what, what I have, it's, what I would say. it's about what I don't think you have when you play against 50. me. That's it. You didn't think you had jack clean of clubs? 75. You let me do this to you post stream too, last time we played. Yeah. Like, you gonna keep letting me. I mean, obviously, I'll just say it. Gary thinks that this hand was not straight in some way. I mean, there's no doubt about it. This is the most disturbed I've ever seen Garrett look at the table. And and I don't think and I think Andy's disturbed too. He 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 doesn't. If you looked over there, it's like, whoa, what what just happened here? You're not the only one that gets lucky sometimes, Garrett. You don't have to get that upset. I don't know what's going on right now. Yep. That was the most insane poker hand I've ever seen. Andy. That can't, like, that's not a poker hand. That wasn't. I, don't know what's I, I played you and not the hand. What's the yeah, problem? You played I played you. Huh? So sense. don't let me play you. Oh, just don't let her play you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's a function of that she thought she could play. I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why this is, of course, so strange is that. But she had the blocker to the string plus draw. That's a jack of clubs. That's both. That's the key card. Eric, you done? I saw that shit. It happens. There's some reason you did it. 
There's multiple reasons I don't. Wow. You only that needed is, one. You thought Jack High was good. That's like some spiritual like guy from outer space. I ran it twice because like, I didn't think your Jack High could be like, good. Oh, like, that is like, you have been the most and most. But it was. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. so congratulations. And most men just love me. I know. I'm just doing it. It's a situation where it's like, is it possible that she just doesn't know, this is what's got to be going through Garrett's mind. Right now, the streamers have gone crazy. Does she just not know that she can't call with Jack High there, and that a bunch of bluffs beat her? Or was the hand not straight in some way? We are on YouTube. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this is really starting to be the crux of the matter, I believe. She shows irritation and puts her brow down it. She says, I played you. That's the real driver in what she's saying. I think what we're seeing is something go back a ways to when we saw her get irritated with him early on in the show and do something like in, in video two, when I pointed out, or video three, when I pointed out, she looked irritated when they were talking and dancing around him. I think we're seeing some of that. Then she goes back to stoic face, but she does what I call the egg protector. Remember, I call men putting their hands in front of their groin, protecting the precious. That's primary sex organs. And women cross their abdomens to protect their uterus and ovaries. And we see her do that when she says it's multiple reasons. And I think she's probably saying more than, with those two words or those few words than she said with anything else. And then she says, most men bluff me. And I am used to it. And she shows disgust. Hmm. Well, there's a reason you might want to take a chance to ridicule this guy with a jack if it's only an X amount of money. I'm not saying that's her driver, but certainly could be. He then adapts and moves his collar even trying to get to some kind of comfort. And he's still showing disbelief. For me, here's what the thing I had to say. She's aware she's on YouTube. She points it out. If she cheated and just cheated for $269,000 in real time, she's pretty damn calm about that because now she's getting back to some kind of normal and to what you said, Scott, just a few minutes ago, I think she's showing a bit of, Hey, I went up to you. That's what I think I see here. Scott, what do you got? I agree with you hundred percent. I think, I think she knows she won. And I think that guy's is, I, yeah, I think he's, he's not acting the way a professional should act. I don't know anything about professional poker, but I would expect someone in that situation to act more professional than that. Um, I think everybody else, is, they begin to second guess what's happened simply because they're watching this guy, you know, be all out of place with his mouth open and, and making that scene. I think they start to, to rethink what's happened as well and just give her that vibe a little bit. And that's when she starts to get, I think, a little bit angry at that point and starts standing up for herself, which she should do, especially in that situation. Um, but the situation, though, wouldn't, wouldn't that be the, let me ask you this, Greg, wouldn't it be the dealer's? Um, job to go, hey, man, something's not right here. Or she wouldn't say anything, the dealer wouldn't? I, you know, look, I, I don't play that kind of poker at this level. These guys, I, they probably have agreed to rules. There's probably some kind of treaty they all work through. I, no idea. But if he okay. thought or she thought something was wrong, I'm sure she would say there's an anomaly. I mean, if she's handling the cards, is her primary okay, role. I I thought think. Maybe she there's was probably also a game master watching all this stuff. You know, somebody okay. who's watching all this, I would imagine, with this kind of money involved. Don't know. That's my guess. Yeah. Tell us if we're right or wrong down the bottom. Yeah, because I, I definitely don't know. But I think everything looks the way it should look right here for, for what's happened for her. I don't think she's – I think you're right, Greg. She didn't – she she would be – she would be acting a lot more nervous at this point if she just won all that money by cheating. And then all of a sudden somebody's asking about it, she'd be like, oh, my gosh, not seeing that at all. I'm To me, it looks like she's confident. She's getting <clears throat> getting worked up that, that this guy's questioning that she won at this point. And is trying to make fun of her, her hand, because it wasn't that good of a hand. But he still lost because, like she said, she played him, not the the game or whatever at this point. Chase, what do you, or uh, yeah, Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I think a, a lot of what we're seeing is interesting and some confident, I will say, confident with quotes around it uh, behavior because it's the Jessica Rabbit acting here. I wish forever that she would feel comfortable just being herself here everybody would have liked it a lot more it would have been a lot more easy to watch where she's just being herself and being a real person and the more open people are about all kinds of things it's even harder to tell 
bluffs and things like that when you're just let go completely. Uh, like you play poker with a guy who's really self-managed. When he starts stressing out, it's an instantaneous tell. You play some poker with somebody who is just themselves 100% and nothing's hidden, nothing's couched, nothing's concealed. That's when the tells are very hard to see because they just act how they want to all the time. So I wish and I hope that maybe the next time we see her, we see the real her and not uh, a character that that's developed. The real her is good enough. And in the next video, we're going to see a lot more. I think a lot of this stress behavior that we're seeing here could potentially be the character's reaction of what confidence should look like to response to cheating. Not saying she did it but that might be her idea of how that character might react. Mark? Yeah, Greg, let's look in detail at that uh, adapter around the collar because th that he does, because it's it's super tiny. All he does is is that. It's minute. It's minute. And what I always love about, uh, you know, adapters that give me a tell is there is no reason why you needed to do that. I mean, if somebody kind of moves their collar, like, like there's all kinds of, re you know, or does something around here, there's all kinds of reasons it has an effect. This is inconsequential. And that screams to me, oh, something is really up here that his unconscious mind decided to just move that a touch. So I think, you know, first of all, I came up with the word that he is mystified by this. I'm going to change that word. I think he's emasculated by it. I think he is, yep. to because this movement, it's something that Ricky Gervais would have put in to a, to a moment of, of, <laughs> of one of his characters being, you know, emasculated slightly you know, really put down. Uh, so it's it's tiny. Um, uh, you, you don't play. Yes, there's, there's somebody in in the uh, in the commentary going. You don't play that hand. You don't play that hand. Well, here's a piece of behaviour: is you do whatever you want to do in life. There's just punishment and prizes for that. There's no bad behaviours, just results that you wanted or didn't want. That's all. She didn't get punished. She just won the prize. She did whatever she wanted to do. Yeah, it doesn't equate to the stats and theory of, of poker. And that's, again, what he seems to be upset about and everybody's upset about. But you just don't play a hand like that. She did. And she just won a big prize. Now, could she do that again and again and again and again and again? Statistically, probably not. But, uh, but you know, maybe she will. Maybe we'll see her playing this incredible, uh, um, risky uh, game. Because does she, does she truly understand the risks or ex have experienced the pain of these risks? Because it would have been painful if she'd have lost. I mean, she'd be out the game and on, on a terrible hand and everybody would have just gone, you're a complete idiot. You have zero idea what, you, what you're doing. Instead, what people are doing are going, you're, you're just a complete outlier and that's, that's unacceptable. You just can't do that kind of thing. Put me in this. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what's going on right now. Yep. That was the most insane poker hand I've ever seen. Andy. That can't, like, that's not a poker hand. That wasn't. Oh, I, I, I played you and not the hand. What's the yeah, problem? You I played you. Makes so sense. don't let me play you. Oh, just don't let her play you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's a function of that she thought she could play. I mean, yeah, okay, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why this is, of course, so strange is that... But she had the blocker to the string plus draw. That's Bo, that's the key card. Eric, you done? I saw that shit. It happened. There's some reason you did it. There's multiple reasons I did it. Oh, you only that, needed one. You thought Jack High was good. That's like some spiritual like guy from outer space. I ran it twice because like, I didn't think your Jack High was good. Like, like, oh, like, that is like, you have been the most that most But it was. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So Dude, congratulations. And most men just bluff me. <laughs> I know. I mean, yeah. I it, it's a situation where I it's like, embarrassed to show that hand. Is, is it possible that she just doesn't know? You also this is what's got to be going through Garrett's mind. Right now. You're the only one 
in it with me. <laughs> the streamers have gone crazy. Does she just not know that she can't call with Jack High there and that a bunch of bluffs beat her? Or was the hand not straight in some way? Um, we are on YouTube. Okay, so I just want to explain to everybody what's going on so there's no confusion. Um, in that particular hand, Garrett was upset because he thought there had to be something going on for me to make that call. I made some references when I was on stream about why I kind of made that call. There's um, two things that were going on over there. So I'm holding the jack of clubs. There's two clubs on the on the board. Uh, after the flop, I have a backdoor flush draw and a backdoor straight draw, which is why I made the call with the 5,000 bet that he initiated. Um, and then when the turn came, it was a three. And you will hear me say on stream, are threes any good? And the reason I said that is because I thought I was holding a jack of clubs and a three of whatever. So I thought, and I say that I think I have a bluff catcher and it's not good enough. So when Garrett shoved on me, there's multiple reasons I called that. Previous experience where I know that he's often bluffing. I also assumed in a hand that I also um, folded to him earlier on in the night, the same night when I thought that he was just on a draw but let him have it, that he was just on a draw, which means he did not have a made hand after the turn. And I thought that I'm holding, you know, a blocker with the jack of flood, like jack flush draw missed and straight draw missed for me. Um, so with a three as a bluff catcher sort of thing. I didn't look back at my hand to see that it was jack four. I ran it twice because I knew I was probably going to lose that unless, I don't know, anything better came than, than, than pocket threes, I guess, or like not even pocket threes, like a, a pair of threes. And I knew I had to run it twice to have that opportunity. So we ran it twice and unfortunately for him, I won that hand despite even having threes, which is still kind of mind boggling to me. Um, I won that hand though, fair and square, and it is what it is. He wasn't happy with it. And I said, Garrett, will you come back on stream? What can I do for you to come back? not make this dramatic. I really appreciate and respect production. I know it's hard work to keep everything in order. Um, there's a lot of money on the table. It's upsetting for me when I lose and win. It's upsetting for anyone. It doesn't matter how much money you have as far as bankroll is concerned, but um, it's important that like everyone is at peace and we don't cause enough disruption. So for me, I'm used to people bluffing me, which is why I often call. Um, and I know that Garrett was super frustrated with me, and he wanted to talk about it. And I said, let's let's do what's going to be the most amicable ending for production as well as moving forward. In my mind, I think I'm good enough that I can win the $130,000 back. That's a lot of money. So I just I, so the whole understanding was. Please come back and continue to play. And if you feel like it's fair that I give you this money back, um, fine, have it. Come back and play, and let's just continue playing. It's just poker at the end of the day. And uh, and and I and I do think of myself in some regard that I will get that hand back, fair and square, because ultimately he didn't think it was a fair hand for him not to win. And. I guess maybe it wasn't a fair hand for me. Maybe we should have just split it right there at, and then at the table, whatever it was. Um, I was okay with giving him, him the money back. I really was. People may not feel that way. I don't like drama. I want to keep it minimal, and it is what it is. And um, I just wanted to really mitigate and reduce the level of drama that it would entice that was going in that direction. But he didn't come back, and, and that's because of uh, ultra people that felt differently about me giving money to him. I'm okay with it. I don't. I want everyone to chill out. It's not that serious. If it doesn't bother me, I, I, it is what it is. I don't feel like I should have won that hand. I should not have won that hand. I think that the call would have ultimately been okay if I was holding jack three, and I wasn't. And then, unfortunately, I still ended up winning. And 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 I can see where his pain is there. Um, and I think that's why I, I did it. I said, you know what? I, I can see why he's upset. And I'm okay with giving the money back. We're good. And if everyone wants to flip out about it, good you. 
too. I don't give a He has his money. I'm cool. Um, and it it was it was it, it wouldn't have been cool to call on Jack for personally, but I called on Jack thinking that I was holding Jack free, and, and and it is what it is. And I'm gonna go back and play. Um, I'll let you guys break down the, what she's saying here because I don't. Cause cause I don't but I'm talking double for no reason. We're good. Uh, everyone can say what they want to say, but I'm cool. So me and Garrett are talking afterwards, and it'll be fine. And. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this is pretty interesting because if we go all the way back to her baseline when she's talking to a friend, a coach, then there's similarity. The cadence is metered, not animated, not overdone. Her internal voice at, at when she talks about I had three as a bluff catcher, both shoulders go up. You would think one shoulder would go up if she was not certain about it. There is a point where one of her shoulders does go up when she says, unless anything better than a three came up. And then she goes like this, but well, I didn't have threes to start with. So that uncertainty is telegraphed. What we're showing you is what double shoulders versus single shoulder looks like. And what that means is there's something different going on in her head when she's doing it. Watch her illustrate with her head, watch her illustrate with her hands. We look for congruency in messaging. When a person is moving everything the same way, their words, their punctuation and all that are hitting, we think of that as congruent. We see a lot of that. She also explains very carefully what she was thinking. Now, whether that's what she was thinking at the moment or after the fact, it tells you she knows cards because she's using the right terminology. I don't know the terminology she's using, all of it. But when she's talking about she had the potential for a flush draw and all that stuff, she had a plan. And I this goes back to where I said I thought maybe she thought she had something and called it and then realized, oh, oh now I'm in trouble. And so... She does nod to illustrate that matches her messages. She also illustrates on this hand and that hand when she's talking about two different things. And then there's one place where she gets to, um, where she's talking about something not going in that direction. She's talking about where things were supposed to go calm and they didn't go in that direction. She does that woman head whip thing that tells you there's some emotion there. She's just containing it. So I would bet there's a lot of heated words. There's a lot of anger. There's her having real feelings about this, but came out and tried to be the, the you know, the, the better of the two options and come out and tell you what she thought. Looks like the baseline we saw earlier. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so she really is going into the explaining here. It's a little bit of a a... a a gentle schooling that she's trying to give here at the same time as kind of nudging it along, helping us understand and join in, be socially engaged with her. And, and you're right, Chase, like this is now a completely different person. I mean, we are back now to that same um, uh, person who we had at the start of, of these, uh, these reels in the interview. Uh, same thing, tucked in with the elbows here, lots of nice big gestures here. The elbows do pop out when she says that's a lot of money. So again, that that makes me sense that there is a real congruency in what she's doing here. She's trying to explain it to us. She's trying to nudge it along so we get it, so everybody can be happy together. And that's the theme that comes along is, is uh, she's trying to please everybody at the table. And what's incongruent is that's not the character that she was playing at the table. The character at the table wouldn't care that, that this person has lost. I mean, that, that character at the table would absolutely delight, you know, in a femme fatale way of, of taking the money. And hey, if you go off and, and, and sink into, you know, a bottle of whiskey, so be it for you. Uh, you got to handle yourself. I handle myself. That's not who we're getting now. We're getting somebody who who will give this person money if they'll just be happy. A people pleaser, essentially, which is not what we saw at the table there. Here we've got somebody who wants to please the family around the table. It'll be interesting to know what her what her family is, how many males made up around the table, and and how you had to placate them and get them on your side, um, you know, around the family situation. Um, so yeah, it's, it, for me, it's, it's the baseline. It's, it's congruent. I don't see any deception around any of this here. Uh, Chase, any other thoughts on this? I'll play devil's advocate for 22 seconds. Brilliant. Here. <laughs> she, she looks a different direction than her baseline. She looks to her left, uh, I think, four times during this 
exchange. And during this exchange, 95% of the time, she's blocking ovaries and uterus. She's doing genital protective behavior and just locked down. Even when she's leaning to describe something, her entire body is locked down. However, every single aspect of her behavior, even when she's in costume, kind of on stage, acting out this this character that she's created is is rooted in you could see behind the mask there that it's rooted in social acceptance everyone getting along acquiescence and getting a feed positive feedback from everybody which would 100 illustrate to me as a profiler that that is the base behavior that we're seeing and that's the base reason that she decided to give that money back acquiescence, social approval, everyone getting along. And that explains to me, even if we delete all of the words and behavior that we're seeing, just that underlying behavior of the desire for acquiescence and the desire for everybody to get along, that explains a lot to me there. Even though we have these deviations in baseline, I think it's because of the presence of the camera and still trying to maintain this balance between myself and Jessica Rabbit and trying to make that happen, which she didn't do very well, but she was more herself here than anywhere else. Scott? I agree with you. And like, like you were saying, Mark, we see a complete, completely different person because game time, just like an interrogation, you go in, you're like, hey, man, in this situation, she's being her. And she's standing outside. She's not being like the baseline we saw earlier because she's not, you know, hey, it's everything's good. And there's nothing up. But here she's got a problem. She's got, she's, it's not a problem. She's telling what happened at this point. So that's why, and she's standing there. She's not sitting down. So I think she's just standing there like guys go to that thing where we put our hands up here and as we're, as we're talking, if we're, if we're on camera or something, just standing there or as a non pro or something. So, I, I think what happened was we're seeing her come out of there, explain what happened. She had words with this guy and she's, and, and she was the bigger person in this. I agree with you, Mark. She said, okay. Yeah. Cause I think she, like you said earlier, she emasculated this guy and he's, and, and so he agreed to take the money back. What kind of guy takes the money back after something like that? You know what I mean? That just makes me go, Oh, that's see, I told you what professional and at, at the beginning there, he was acting a little, little non-pro, but she's the bigger person here. She went and said, okay, I'm doing it for the game. We're on YouTube. Let's get back in there and finish this up, man. What do you, what do you need? What is it you need me to do? What, what do you want to happen here? She's problem solving at this point, trying to make everything go smoothly. What do you want? You can't beat that, you know? So she was the bigger person, makes him look really bad because where is he? He left. He won't come back to the game. So she wins on that in, in my book, she went and that, that whole explanation there, there are a couple of things that do look iffy, but that's because we're looking at a completely, completely different situation with a completely different person. At this point, we're not looking at the game person. We're looking at the person, person, the real person, and we're seeing what she's really made of and, and, and what kind of person she is. And we're seeing by his reaction, what kind of guy he is at this point. All right. Well, let's throw it around the room and talk about what we think we've seen, kind of wrap it up in a minute or less. Mark, you want to go first? Yeah, just a great example of somebody who doesn't necessarily not play by the rules, but play by the established statistics of, of how you should, you know, get resource and lose resource. And so you get an outlier situation and, and people explode around it and get upset. And some people, you know, spit the dummy out there, pram. Uh, Chase, what do you think? <laughs> oh, that's so close. Thank God Zoom has this little warning that pops up now. Yep. <laughs> All right, you want to do that again? Chase, what do you got? I'm 100% sure Scott's going to edit this out. So <laughs> let, me, let me go back. Yeah, let's do it again. <laughs> oh, great. Thanks. Nobody's watching right now anyway. It's things like an hour and a half long or something. <laughs> what a friend. Thank you. <laughs> so... I agree with you guys completely. That is what we're seeing here. I think we saw a, a lesser person and a greater person. And Robbie, if you're watching, 
send us an email. We will all four coach you. I'm volunteering these three guys. We didn't talk about this. Yeah, cool. We'll coach you on a Zoom call for the top four behavior experts on planet Earth. We'll give you some coaching and we'll make it even more badass. And we'd love to do it. Greg? Yeah. So there's a lot of things that could be happening here. Could she be cheating? Sure. If she is, you guys need to be watching out because she's going to whip your ass in poker. Because if she can hide cheating that well, she can hide her tails like all hell. So, yeah, if you're watching, we we um, are open to, to coaching you. But more importantly, this is a good example of paying attention to a baseline, to what somebody is normally like when they're talking to somebody they know, when somebody's under high stress, and then when they come out and talk about it. There are three different ways you get to watch this person and see how she reacts. Again, if this is hiding cheating, I'm impressed, and you guys are in trouble. Scott, what do you got? Yeah, I agree. She's yeah. I don't think she's cheating at all here. I think she played the game, and like Mark was talking about in the uh, the chess cheater thing, she she she's an outlier in this point. She came in and like you said, Greg, coming in not having played for years and years and years and years professionally, did something nobody expected, and and won. Then we see this guy get all butt hurt. And coming and whining, and she totally one ups him and puts him in his place, makes him look bad to guys. Because where did he go? He ran off because he's embarrassed. Wouldn't you be too? If somebody that you thought you were so much better than beats you and then you act like that, that's why he's not there because of the way he acted. So, I, yeah, that's what? One, one point to make. We just covered the chess cheat last week and we had a very different opinion and he could be an outlier, but it was based on very different things yeah. we saw in terms of body language. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. And there's, she's not cheating here. She's not cheating here. I'd put all my chips on saying she's not in my game. <laughs> I'd put down whatever cards I got and say, yeah, I'd push them all into the no cheating pile. Uh, at this point. So, yeah, I think I, I think she she was the bigger person in this, and it shows. I think she came out on top. All right, fellas, I think this was another good one, and I'll we'll see you next time. Jill. Hans Neiman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So what do you got?